everybody. Welcome to Kiran Zaki World again. As my channel is also about some educational content, so I thought I must bring some educational stuff today. What I taught as a former teacher. So I will discuss the nervous system and sensory organs today. The nervous system and sensory organs help the body to receive stimuli from the environment and react to it. It means like we get energy or feeling through it. There are five sensory organs, that is sight, hearing, taste, touch and smell. Let me discuss the purpose briefly. So, it gathers information about the body's internal and external environment, processes and response to the information it has gathered, and senses respond to stimuli in our environment as I earlier said. So senses send a message to the brain by means of our nerves. The brain then interprets the message and our bodies react. Stimuli in the form of size, smell, tastes, things that we sense. First, I will discuss in the senses that is nose, that smells enter the nose in the form of vapors and messages are sent to the brain for recognition of the smell. discuss uh, this diagram briefly uh, that the nose has two cavities uh, separated from one another by a wall of cartilage called the septum and the external opening known as nares or nostrils. The main function in the nose that happens in olfactory which is smelling portion of the nose where most of the lining is mucous membrane um, a small segment of the lining contains the nerve cells and that are the actuary sensory organs. The nerve cells into the nasal cavity are covered only by a thin layer of moisture and the moisture dissolves microscopic particles that the ear has carried into the nose from other emitting substances and the particles dissolved in the fluid stimulate the olfactory nerve cells chemically. Now the next sensory organ I will talk about ear. So senses sound and helps us maintain our balance. The cochlea is the part of the ear that enables us to hear. And I will show that uh, in the picture also in the diagram sound vibrations and to the ear where they are converted into a nerve impulse. The auditory nerve takes the message to the brain for interpretation. The auditory cavities are situated on both sides of the head. The ear is divided into three parts in the diagram you can see, outer ear, middle ear, and inner ear. So in the outer ear, it's like earlobe, pina, the funnel sound waves and reflects them into the auditory canal and auditory canal, where sound waves move through the auditory canal to the eardrum. In the middle ear, that's the eardrum. The eardrum is a thin membrane that vibrates due to uh, sound waves. There is ossicles as well. The ossicles consist of three tiny bones called the hammer, anvil, and stirrup. 
The vibrating eardrums make the hammer move, which knocks against the anvil. Thereafter, the anvil pushes against the stirrup, which moves and sends sounds waves to the cochlea. Then, the inner ear and in the in inner ear, semicircular canals. And what does it do? The semicircular canals control balance. Cochlea. It is filled with liquid and consists of cells with small sensitive hairs, vibrating hairs. Uh, when the stirrup pushes against the cochlea, it sends waves through the liquid. The waves makes the hair cells move, which stimulates the auditory nerve. Auditory nerve, uh, when the hair cells sense movement in the liquid, they send this information to the brain and the brain interprets the information and this leads to the hearing of different sounds. Now the process of hearing that how do we hear? Here you can see in the diagram the orange side color that's the outer ear, uh, the pink side is the middle ear and the blue side is the inner ear so the process it happens like you know the sound waves moves to the inside of the ear and from there sound moves uh, cause movement in the middle ear from there movement in the middle ear cause waves in the cochlea hair cells are stimulated and send impulses to the brain and from there, brain will receive impulses, interprets it and identifies what is heard. Now I will talk about tongue. It has taste buds which can detect your four basic tastes. And that is sweet, sour, bitter and salty. The taste bud receptors send info to the brain so that we can taste. Tongue is a movable muscular organ. It plays an important role in the chewing and swallowing of food. You can see this picture where we can feel the taste buds on the sides of the tongue we always feel like sour taste in the middle not many taste buds the front side of the of the tongue always like sweet or salty and by the end of the tongue we always feel like a bitter taste the taste bud contains uh, the taste receptor cells they send information detected by clusters of various receptors to the brain. Human eye. Light enters the eye through the pupil and lands on the retina, which has special receptors that convert light into an electrical impulse that is sent to the brain via an optic nerve so you can see that in the picture there are two types of photoreceptors uh, the first one is rods that allow us to see in dim light and the next one is cone that allow us to see colors so the optic nerve sends signals to the brain which are perceived as color light and darkness and then the brain interprets the signals and forms the image that is seen For example the human eye is able to adapt to all forms of light when it is dark the pupils dilate means get bigger when it is bright the pupils contract means like get smaller the 
This is the way to adjust the amount of light entering the eye. If the pupils are dilated, it means like more light enters the eye, and if the pupils contract, means less light can enter the eye. You can see that in the picture as well. Undilated pupil, less light. Undilated pupil, more light. Let me tell you the anatomy of an eye. It's like um, the eyes are held in place in the eye sockets by six different muscles. And uh, the eyelids and eyelashes prevent foreign objects like dust and small insects from uh, penetrating the eye. Regular blinking provides fluid to the eye which prevents it from drying out also. Here in the picture you can see the sclera, that's the white part of the eye, cornea, the transparent layer which helps to bend incoming light and helps to focus. The iris. The iris is the green, blue or brown part of the eye. That small muscles contract or relax to make the pupil bigger or smaller. Now the pupil is the black part on the center of the eye, which is actually a hole. Light enters the eye through the pupil, now the lens. It focuses light on the retina at the back of the eye. Retina contains millions of photoceptors. Photoceptors are sensors that convert light into electrical impulses which are then sent to the brain via the nerve. So how do we see? Items reflect light and light enters the eye through the cornea and the pupil. Then lens bends the light and focuses it on a part of a retina. The photoreceptors convert the image to electrical impulses and impulses are sent to the brain. Brain interprets the impulses on an image and we see. Skin. Sense touch, heat and cold helps to regulate temperature. In a diagram, you would see the anatomy of the skin. So on the skin, you would see on the left hand side, the sharp part of the hair. Uh, down that part, you would see the oil glands. On the left hand side, round kind of uh, structure has been made. And then the round, the bigger round side is the follicle. On the left hand side, if you see, <coughs> sorry, uh, the sweat pur, down there you would see the sweat tube kind of structure and it would be like a ribbon kind of structure down there that those are the sweat glands. The skin is the biggest organ of the body. It protects and covers everything that is inside the body. Dead skin cells are continuously replaced by new cells. The functions of the skin are to protect internal organs against the environment controls body temperature and has the sense of touch. So how does our sense of touch work? Cells which are receptors in the skin are stimulated. For example, it is cold. So receptors surrounding the nerves and in the skin are stimulated and the stimulus is converted to an impulse and is sent to the brain. The brain then interprets the impulse and identifies what is felt. Now I would like to talk about brain and spinal cord. So the brain is a soft gray organ made up of millions of nerve cells. It is well protected by membranes and the skull, responsible for controlling how your body responds to 
stimuli that are received by your sense organs. Now the brain parts and its function. So on the right hand side, the top part you would see the cerebrum, which function is to control, amongst others, in the way of senses, speech, voluntary movement, memory, emotions, and intelligence. So down there, uh, after cerebrum, you will see the cerebellum and its function are muscle coordination and maintains balance. On the left hand side, um, the first part you would see thalamus and that controls amongst others in sleep feelings of hunger and thirst, aggression and reproduction. The last part you will see, medulla oblongata, and its function is to control reflexes, for example, breathing and heart rate and extended spine. Here you can see the color picture as well of the brain. <laughs> the brain is connected to the rest of the body through the nervous system. The nervous system consists of neurons. Neurons are very sensitive cells that conduct impulses to the body. Spinal cord. A long cord of nerves that runs from the brain down the back. It is found inside a canal in the vertebrae of the spinal column, which protects it from damage. It is about as thick as your little finger. Most impulses that come from the nerves of your body travel through the spinal cord on the way to the brain. Nerves go to your arms, hands, legs and feet, face and other organs such as heart and bladder. Your sense organs send all their messages to the brain or spinal cord along nerves. Now where is neurons? The top part you would see the sensory neurons and its description would be like it conducts impulses from the sense organs to the brain and spinal cord. The next is interneuron and that connects sensory neurons and motor neurons. And the last is like motor neuron and that conducts impulses from the brain and the spinal cord to the other organs. The spinal cord plays an important part in the nervous system. It's in the spine and stretches all the way up the back to the base of the brain and it is protected by the spine. So for now, it was a brief study about a nervous system and sensory organs. Uh, I will bring some more educational stuff next time in my other videos. Bye for now and thanks for watching.